Someone who knows better than most what to expect this weekend is Labour MP for Canterbury, Rosie Duffield. Hi, Rosie. Rosie joins me now Hi, with Kevin you. and Annabelle still in the studio. So, Rosie, straight over to you. Will you be going to the conference this weekend? Yes, I will. Oh, good. Because you've had problems in the past, haven't you? Do you feel kind of like safe now? Is all of that out the way? No. <laughs> um, whenever I'm appearing at the Fringe event, um, my name isn't allowed to be in the listings um, and all of the venues have to be kept hidden until uh, we've got the police sorted. And then when people have booked to come, then it's revealed to them where we're meeting. So it's a bit better than it was, but not entirely trouble free. And Rosie, why is that? Um, because we get tipped off that people with balaclavas and protesters are going to be surrounding the buildings where there are meetings. And last year, I sort of got sneaked into one, a fringe meeting, and there were police all around and private security and all kinds of things. It's a bit over the top, but, but it's, Rosie, it's wherever women are meeting. But this is the Labour Party conference. Everybody there has got a pass. It's really secure. Yeah. You can't get in unless you're a Labour Party member. So these are Labour Party members that you're being protected from? Yeah, and, and a lot of the fringes are just outside that secure zone. And I understand that every single day there's going to be um, particular groups protesting outside the actual conference venue, the secure zone as well. And this is because of your beliefs that a man is a man, a woman is a woman, and a yeah. woman can't have a penis. That's that's basically your your belief. You are yeah. I mean, it's not just me. It's other groups of women and other women MPs and yeah, activists yeah. like the Women's Declaration. So yeah. And and how is it with your sorry? I should explain, shouldn't I? You and I spoke about this a while ago. How is it with your colleagues now? Because you are almost to a point of obsessive harassment from some of your own colleagues who are MPs. Has that died down now? Is that any better for you? Um, yeah, I mean, mostly they just sort of ignore me a bit and, um, and, and get on with their own thing. And I think now that the party has officially sort of shifted more towards my position, I think, you know, it, sh it should be a bit better from now on, I guess. You've dragged it towards your position, Rosie. That's what you've done. I mean, you're always in the right place. You just drag them to realise that what you were saying and what you were talking about actually made sense. Um, so, so let's just go on to think more positive. The by-election win last night for Keir yeah. Starmer. That's, I mean, that's great news. What's your majority? Is it 1,800 or what is it? Um, I think my personal one went up from 187 to about 10 times more than that, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's good. She's the only person I know small. with a majority less than 2,000 who doesn't know exactly what it is. <laughs> Most MPs know to the exact, exact number. So, um, I mean, that's going to be good news for you, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, when I was elected in 2017, there were six or seven, I think it was seven, um, Scottish MPs, and we were elated at that result. And now, of course, we've just got poor old Ian Murray, and he's now got a buddy. So that's that's quite exciting, and hopefully yeah. it'll pave the way to more of that in the next election. Well, it was a 20% swing, Rosie, so if yeah, that's the case, huge. you're going to have a much bigger party. You're probably going to, if that went to a general election, and that could be, you know, a general election can come as late as January 2025, so a long yeah. way to go. But, you yeah. know, you could have a lot more people in your party who have some more sympathy with your position, and I think that would be a good mm. thing for you and people <laughs> like, do you not think so? I'm not sure. I think, um, you know, each leader chooses candidates, you know, quite carefully to reflect kind of where they are. And I think um, Keir's not going to want many people like me with views that he sees as controversial and upsetting some of the socialist societies. Um, he's under a lot of pressure from particularly activists around him in his office and in London and in LGBT plus Labour. And I don't imagine that, I mean, certainly women I know with views like mine um, haven't been selected for seats. So I don't see that there's a massive shift there, if I'm honest with you. Oh, that's a shame. Kevin and I were just on Annabelle when we were just talking about HS2 and uh, the fact that I'm, I'm absolutely flabbergasted that Keir Starmer has announced today that he's not going to reverse yeah. HS2. It feels to me like he's just made absolutely the wrong move. And when he could have, on the back of that election win yesterday, that he could have yeah. used that to keep that momentum going. I mean, I, I was just saying to Kevin, he could have been in Manchester on his way back from Scotland with Andy Burnham at absolutely. his side, saying that he's not going yeah. to leave those forgotten communities behind, that he'll review yeah. it and do what he can to reverse it. 
But he's just said no. I, again, I was saying, you know, so much that's happening today is kind of like over my head, what is going on? Why didn't he do that? He was advising him just to follow Tory policy. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of a bit baffling, I think, when we've got such a huge lead in the polls and have had for a while, that we're not making bolder, more radical sort of policy announcements. And I think he would really have got away with supporting Andy Burnham and some of the leaders in the North by going back to HS2, or at least a version of it, you know, somewhere in between what Rishi promised and and what we were promising for HS2. So it is a bit baffling that we're not coming out with these policies. And, and you hear Rachel Reed saying it's because we have to be very cautious and careful with money, but we are playing our cards very close to our chest. I think it's about time, and this conference should be the time when we start revealing what it is that we're agree, you know, not agreeing with the Tories on and what our offers and our policies are going to be. So I think it was a kind of a, a silly move to make an enemy of Andy Burnham, who was already yeah, was a, a really bit of an enemy. And I think yeah. that's really a daft move to make Andy, because Andy is a big voice in the North. You know, Absolutely. we've got Steve yeah. in Liverpool, but actually the bigger voice is definitely Andy Burnham. And to make an enemy yeah. out of somebody as powerful as Andy, who's been the mayor of Manchester for how long now is it, Kevin? Second term, isn't it? Yeah, Second it's term. like, what, six, seven years? Yeah. I just think, do you think that was a bit of a, a daft move? No, but it's how, um, how heavy does Andy Burnham come out criticising uh, Keir Starmer? Now, Keir Starmer can legitimately say his strategy is working because you just look at the Ruther Glen by-election, huge swing there, he's got those huge poll leads. He'll, you know, I would argue, look, you can afford to be bolder. He'll be saying it's because I'm not bolder is why I've got those large leads. So you're saying that Keir Starmer's... Policy approach is do nothing, say nothing, don't don't rock the boat. No, it's not quite that. Labour's got a very good package on job rights, for, for instance. You've know, got proposals on education and health and areas of the economy. But it's certainly not the 2019 manifesto, Jeremy Corbyn, when Labour got hammered. So he will say, if we had that, I won't be in the lead uh, you know, the way I am now, even if he did promise most of those policies to get elected Labour leader. Annabelle, do you think that's what he's doing? Do you think it's a say nothing, do nothing, just stay where you are, 21 points ahead? Certainly, I think it's been mm -hmm. that until this stage. But at some point, Keir Starmer needs to come out and present an agenda to the country. And let's not forget that when Angela Rayner was speaking at the Trades mm -hmm. Union Congress just a few weeks ago and talking about that package of workers' rights, it was actually stoking some division within the party because there was a suggestion that she was trying to move Labour back to the left when after that mini reshuffle, actually what Keir Starmer was doing was pulling it more to the centre, even to the right on certain issues. But there's only so long they can rely on the incompetence of the Tories and promising that they will be marginally better than the other guys. Let's not forget, when you look at the result in Rutherglen, it wasn't really so much that voters were going out and supporting Labour. It was just that they didn't want the other guys. The mm. SNP now are extremely unpopular. The Tories are extremely unpopular. If you're going to make a protest vote, then Labour is the obvious choice. That said, it's unequivocally a very positive day for let, Keir let, Starmer, let, but it'll be very interesting to see what happens at the Labour Party conference because mm. he is under pressure now to set out his vision for what five years and of Starmer-led Labour government would look like. And that's interesting to see what he says in his speech, to see what hope he offers for the future, because it was not in our speech from our party, to see what mm. hope he offers that people can rally behind in what are difficult times that we're living at the moment. So that that would be real. And you're, you know, you're absolutely right about um, it's it's just not the other guy. So, and we've said this before, Kevin, uh, before the summer, that actually is, I know you yeah. don't like this, Kevin, there isn't any love out on the streets for Keir Starmer. It's like people are, they go to Labour because it's either a protest vote or they, they may as well. It's not like people are going, yeah, Keir Starmer leads Labour, we're going to vote for Labour. There isn't yeah. that. Yeah, but this has been happening now for about a year, hasn't it? Now, look, he's got to come out with policies at some, some bold, you know, very vivid policies you can sell on a doorstep. Four, five, six reasons why you should vote for us. In Scotland, in that by-election, it was make work pay. Another three-word slogan, or rather like, uh, get Brexit done, but it was make yeah. work pay. But, you know, pay. there's been no one since Tony Blair, and there's been, in the Labour Party, and there's been no one that has nobody uh, emerged like Boris Johnson in the Conservative Party. They're the big winners that you need to get those big majorities. Have we still got Rosie with us? Rosie. 
Um, Angela Rayner. So I'd like to talk about Angela because we're just talking about the men. So Angela is, you know, she's very personable and she's, yeah. I, I actually really like Angela. She's, uh, she's a very nice lady. I mean, she does sometimes say some ridiculous things, but she's like, um, what was it she said? What was that? Scum. Yeah. You know, last well, year. Where, yeah. You know, she stayed at home for a week and it was, yeah, a lot of very, a lot of your party, your MPs were really angry with her because that yeah. rhetoric, you know, you, you have responsibilities when you're MP and that rhetoric actually can cause a lot of problems, particularly with, yeah, you know, the history of MPs and, and problems. But do you think Angela's going to play a big part leading up to the general election? What role do you see? I know she's deputy leader, obviously, but what role do you see mm. for her moving forward? I think she's really the the person that most of our members kind of wanted to see at the top. I mean, she got an overwhelming amount of votes when we had the deputy leadership campaign. And I think people can really relate to her. She's fun. She's sometimes completely kind of off script and unpredictable. And I think people can relate to her backstory as well. She's just an ordinary person who's battled through some pretty difficult times and difficult childhood to get where she is. I think people can really relate to that. And I think she represents that half of the party that are still there. People who want us to be true to our Labour values and not drift too far to the right. So do you know what I think they're doing? I think they're holding Angela there. And I think they're holding mm -hmm. her there to get through election. And I think they're, and honestly, I hope they don't because I really like her. But I think Rachel Reeves and Keir Starmer and another group of people are just going to ease her out as soon as the election's over. Right, oh, Rosie, you've got to say goodbye. Lovely to see you again. I hope to speak Thank to you, you soon. Thank you, too.